Here we have an alto mouthpiece made by Arnold Brillhart, a tunnelin. Um, these pretty much, this is a great neck New York version. Uh, pretty much all of these have, a, have the problem that they split in the shank. It's uh, an early plastic, uh, Arnold Brillhart called it Lucite, that's the brand name from D DuPont. But pretty much all of them split right here, whether that's from jamming it on the neck and, and wiggling it a little. It may, may be a little tight bore here, but the main problem is the material is brittle. And this one has a crack. Looking even inside the bore, you can see the crack goes all the way to about here on the inside. I've never seen one of these split in two, uh, but the crack can open up enough that it, it'll cause a leak. Uh, you can't glue it shut by just trying to insert some crazy glue in the middle of it just one well, yeah you, you might be able to do that but it won't hold because the amount of stresses on it from from usage will split it open again this one even has a crack near the tip but doesn't look like it goes all the way through i don't see any on this side and, if, and this part would be under the bite plate so i can't really tell but i've never seen one of these split in two um, I think there's enough material in the back here that it holds it together, but pretty much all of them will eventually need uh, for security to get a little banding of some sort here. I've done this several ways. I'm going to show you uh, a few of them. One uh, way you can do it yourself is to get a radiator hose clamp. Uh, this is kind of a big clunky one, but you can actually find them half this width. This is all I have here. Uh, go to an automotive parts store, maybe a hardware store. Automotive probably would have a better selection, and uh, you tighten it down to about the size you need, and it's just a screwdriver adjustment to you know get this belt around it, and you want it snug, not so tight you're going to crush the plastic. So you know, kind of clunky looking, but it does the job. Uh, if you're scared, you can do that until you get it repaired some other way. Um, you know, somebody could cut cut the excess tab away, but you still got this big screw uh, adjustment on here to deal with. So that's the do-it-yourself, and it allows you to take it off later too to prove that it's a great neck if you have it. Uh, the other way that I've repaired this in the past is to wrap it with uh, I haven't used fishing line, but some guys do that, or piano wire or music wire get real thin this comes in a bunch of different sizes um, and the problem is you got to be good at tying knots and wire you get it started wrap it around and then um, tie it off and coat it with uh, some kind of epoxy to make sure it stays there um, it's a real pain to do that uh, next you could get a sleeve made um, you can go to a machine shop and they can you know turn on a lathe a sleeve that'll you know fit right on there but actually it's easier if you go out and buy yourself uh, a brass tube um, this one is an inch in diameter on the outside with a 30 thousands wall and it's pretty much the right size to do 95 percent of all the mouthpieces out there I use this for shank extensions uh, but you know it goes over the whole shank you have to figure out how much you need cut off a, a sleeve and then uh, you epoxy it in place this one's a little loose fit but if you use an epoxy in here that fills the gap uh, and once it's set it'll be nice and tight so um, you know the problem is though this will also cover the uh, uh, lettering here if you want to kind of show off that it truly is a great neck so uh, that leads me up to my current clever way of doing this. I, uh, if you go to Amazon, some other places online, you can get yourself a set of ring sizers that are used in the jewelry you know, business to size ring fingers or whatever finger you're going to use to um, you know, get a ring for. Um, this is uh, not 
very expensive. When I bought these, they were probably 15 bucks, but I think you can get them below $10 now. They're advertised as stainless steel, but they're not. They're just plated with um, chrome or nickel. It's pretty shiny and not tarnishing, so it's it's some, some version of nickel or chrome. And uh, uh, it doesn't really matter that the sizes are even accurate. Um, you just need a group of sizes so you can get to one that is going to fit your repair. Somewhere around ring size 12 is what will work. Um, I've used one on here already, let me see, probably for a soprano. So let me go through here. So that fits pretty good. Let me try the sizes next to it. One smaller. That's a little tight. Next one else is probably going to be loose. So this size here that I'm using has got a 12 dash dash on it. There, you know, the size next to it is a 12 dash, which I can almost jam on there. And what you can do, you can get several usages out of this entire set. Um, if one's a little snug, you, you just got to file down the edge a little bit. If one's a little loose, you got to rely on epoxy. So I can get maybe three or four uses out of an entire set. So I'm going to use this one here. It does have a tab on it, so we got to cut that tab off. You can put it in a vise and use a, a hacksaw. Um, I'm going to use my uh, high-speed rotary tool and a cutoff wheel. This is a, a thin you know, abrasive cutoff wheel. This is not very strong, so it's pretty easy to, to break these, so you'll need more than one. Uh, they come in thicker sizes, but the thicker ones uh, don't cut as easy. It takes away more metal. So, uh, Also, the safe way to cut this is with the blade rotating away from you, so stuff doesn't come back to your eye. So I have to do it from this angle. about halfway through there. Okay, there it is. So, you can see that it the you can start seeing the underlying plating under there. Um, it's a soft metal, could be brass. Bronze, something castable, I imagine, or forgeable. So you can use a file or a sander or whatever to, you know, finish that. I like to have the brass piece on the bottom of the mouthpiece, uh, the exposed plating, I guess. You know, down there, but you can spin it around however you want. The only thing I don't like about this is maybe it's a little thick, but um, you know, it it does the job and it's it's really not too too offensive. Um, you could try to sand it or file it down, but that makes a can of worms of a job. So the next step is to get some two-part epoxy. I like to use a clear epoxy that dries in five minutes. This is Loctite. There's a few other brands that I, I use when I run out. It's in the syringe. It makes it convenient to get both parts out, get yourself out there. A dab of each. Have yourself a stick to mix it up.
don't need a lot on there but you do want to get a full coverage Spin it a little, and that'll help distribute the uh, epoxy. And uh, you can try to wipe it with a rag, but it's going to move move around on you a bit, maybe. But we'll see. Let me try it. Being how it's clear, it'll it'll dry clear. Okay, I did spin it. <laughs> and I'll probably wait till this sets up and then I'll uh, file that even or sand that a little smoother. But there you have it. Pretty simple f fix for the problem that all these have. 